ladies and gentlemen, today we found an extremely rare 40 foot Prevo, and it's always an honor to be with one of the craftsmen that helped build this coach. Jojo, how you doing today, sir? Doing well, sir. We're yeah. gonna learn a lot about this coach, uh, but this is a 2008 Parliament, mm -hmm. and you helped build this coach? I was on the team, yes. Yeah, I was there at the time. We built uh, built several of these, of these 40 footers. They're very, very highly sought after because of the size and maneuverability, but yeah, I was on board with this build. So this is a double slide coach. Mm -hmm. I want to show everybody the coach with the slide rooms in, slide rooms out. And whenever we go through a coach with you, you look at it at a totally different angle. So I think the viewers are going to learn a lot today. So sure. why don't we jump in and take a closer look? Absolutely. Yeah, so starting on the exterior of the coach, what's going on on the exterior here? I call it a basic parliament build. And by that, I mean, we've got the standard four, four awnings. This is, as Andrew said, a twin slide, which is hard to find in a uh, 40 footer. Now this has valid slides, so this is not the actual die hard Prevo slides. They're a very, very good valid slide. They make an exceptional slide room. So this is equipped with two valid slides. Again, it is gonna have the air seals like a traditional slide room, so there's nothing to worry about there. With the air seals there, what's the benefit of having an air seal on that slide room versus? Versus the crush seal? Your air slide is gonna keep everything out. Providing that the seal is good, it's not overinflated, underinflated. Your airbag seal is definitely gonna be your best form of weather um, proofing your, your motor home. It knocks down on the noise, knocks down on the air, pretty much air seals it when your slide room is all the way out. Whether it's a valid or whether it's a Prevo slide room, it's gonna have the airbag. So it is definitely a plus to have that where the crush seal, once it goes all the way out, if the coach tends to rock or you get a little bit of hard driving rain, it has a tendency of getting by some of the other manufacturer's crush seals. Now you also mentioned that there was only a few of the 40 footers built in the double slide. Were most of those non-slide coaches? A lot of them were single. single so you're going to have a single slide room up front, whether it's driver or passenger, and what we call a north-south bedroom set up to where your bed is looking straight out your windshield. This is a really cool coach. So let's, uh, let's open up these bays Absolutely. here. Absolutely. We can start here. Now these are going to open up this way due to the fact that the slide room is here. So what you see here is you see a, a bank of Zantrac 4,000 watt inverters. And what we did is we made this accessible. So this guy will pull all the way out making your inverter is easy to access, easy to work on, diagnose. I mean, God forbid if you had to repair something, it's it's right here. You don't have to take the compartment apart, which is what we kind of built our motorhome around, kind of emulate the, the idea of an easy fix or even a self-diagnosis over the phone because that's kind of what we did there. We also put our surge guard protection built in, so this is not at the end of your shore cord on this model. Nothing less to be left behind or to go missing at a campsite. We also have your satellites. We have external satellites, both A and B, as well as antenna and cable input here. We also have a buddy plug. Anybody that's had a stacker trailer, you can power it up there auxiliary air both in and out if you need to manually power your bus up air your bus up or supply your neighbor with with air you can do it right here this here obviously this is your shore cord uh, when it gets a battery how will you roll up the shore cord without that remote you're gonna lift this all the way up oh and you've got a yep you've got patio right lights there. there and both power on and off and shore cord in and out yep. right there which is a traditional uh, parliament you it's very hard to find where the shore cord is on them, but we try to make it less discreet where your actual shore cord bay is. Moving along with bay number two here. So this is gonna be our power bay. Here we do use our traditional power tech generator out of Leesburg. These guys are fantastic. So being a 40 footer with this model and three air conditioners, we didn't see the need for a 20 kW. So we put a 15 kW, same durability that you would come to expect from either a power tech or a Martin diesel. They're just fantastic generators generators and most of them share the same components. That's kind of what we've done in this bay here. Pretty easy to access, easy to get to the fan belt. If you need to change the fan belt, you don't have to go through an access wall, plenty of room. Also insulated with one inch foam insulation, reinforced insulation board, so you really don't hear it when it's running. This here is our battery complement. We're gonna have house batteries behind here. And on this, this uh, model, we use 4D lifelines. So you have your generator battery right 
right here. And then you have your disconnects as well as for your generator, 12 volt, and your inverters are also here. Up here, you could barely see in the corner, you'll see uh, air regulators, and this is gonna regulate the airbag system going to the generator. So it rides on air, you don't feel the vibration as it's running. We also protected a lot of our components using a battery isolator. So right there is gonna charge your generator battery as the motor's running using that um, battery isolator right there. As you're driving down the road, you're getting a charge on your gen battery as well. Now I'm already learning a lot about this coach and I forgot to mention to the folks the price of this coach. Brad has this coach listed at $399,999 for a 08 double slide. What do you think of the price on it? I think it's not gonna last. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And I say that because, you know, even if you take out the fact that it's a 40 footer, a Prevo Pre-Def XL2 for that price, is incredible. And then you add a twin slide and 40 foot to where you're able to maneuver in and out of state parks without any trouble. It's uh, it's priced very, very reasonable. Well, one of the other big advantages of this coach is that it's here at the Motor Coach store where when you take delivery, I'm pretty sure you'll be the one that goes over this yeah. coach. When someone buys this coach, how does that delivery process go? That's a good question and in, in, uh, with a very simple answer. What we like to do, we want you to feel like you're in control of what you buy. As Brad said in an earlier video with Andrew, own the coach, don't let the coach own you. Well, we'd like to teach that ownership to you at delivery. So come in on a, uh, on, on a given day, spend the night in the motor home, push work everything, make a little checklist, and we're going to revisit it the following day. Goal is we'd like to let you leave here with a full understanding and be confident and comfortable in the machine. There's a lot to go through. I know what I'm doing with this motor coach. If I didn't, I know the people to talk to. Um, so that's the idea around a delivery we'd like to, to make sure you roll out of here with a little bit of confidence a lot yeah. of value to that and then i also have to mention this coach has not even been through the detail process mm -hmm. has not even been washed yet what? but when this coach came in i wanted to get you in front of the camera just because <laughs> there's so much to learn here but it is going to get fully detailed paint corrected wheels polished just a whole nother level mm -hmm. uh, but what else is going on here on the driver's side of the coach here i don't think we visited this one yet so oh, yeah. this is a water bay here we've got city water in. Behind here is our ever famous 600 series aqua hot which is also a dual heating element. It's a very, very nice machine. This was replaced by the 675 Delta. Uh, but for a 40 footer, this is overkill, really, for this bus. It could have actually taken a 450. So this is where we keep our Aqua Hot. We've got manual dumps right here, Valtura valves. We also have a water system flush. Your tank sentry for level, tank leveling. So we've done some videos in the past with Andrew and we speak about accessibility on a parliament. This is a fine example of it with the breakaway compartment. Com Compartments. So now you can access everything you need to access without taking your entire compartment apart. You can just take away the, the, the pieces that you need. And I want to point out just, you just took these panels on and off, but even with them on, and again, this has not been washed or detailed, so these bays are going to be detailed out, but you can see how flush all of this is. A lot to be said about the craftsmanship that you could take the panels on, put mm -hmm. them off, and it still looks super clean and super flush. So. Absolutely. And they went in detail was everything when we built our machines all the way down to the rubber bump stops so when you push your your faucet all the way back in after you're washing your hands you're not marring up the uh, the brushed aluminum so just that kind of detail is the way uh, this coach was put together. This is the last of its age right here. They do not make these doors anymore. Kind of the barn style it's doors. the old barn style doors. And it, it's been replaced. When they introduced the X3, it opens up much like a H3 does, the new style. So we have our Series 60, uh, 515. It's mated with an Allison 4000. I see just from a glance that we have a new air compressor put on there. But this really is the heartbeat of it right here. This is an air-cooled 450 amp Niehoff alternator, which will allow this machine to power just about everything on board rolling down the road with no generator. We also have a secondary uh, 12 volt alternator there. And this system here 
is our taillight converter, which is made by uh, RCT. These guys used to be in Clearwater, right around the corner from our plant. So that what makes this beautiful is, if you've ever burned a taillight converter out on the road, with this one, you'd simply remove the four bolts, and in between each stud is a fuse. It follows the traditional Prevo rear start, auxiliary oil, complement, rear fuse panel, which junctions to the front underneath the uh, driver's seat. Now, now, as you're showing this bay, I'm noticing this structure right mm. here. Uh, this is kind of different than what we've seen in some of the other engine bays. What is it about this bus? The cage. This is the way they build their system from the floor line up. You're going to see a lot of this structure throughout the bus. I actually have pictures. We've gutted one down to the framework. This is the kind of cage you're going to see throughout the sides, front end, back end. This is the structure that Prevo puts into their into their build. Safety is number one with the Prevo being a commercial shell. So you'll see a lot of this structure. This one is not so exposed on a lot of other models why you didn't see it. A lot of people will put a what we call a bright panel and just leave the cutouts here for your radiator fluid as well as your, your oil complement. Yeah, and um, I see here the belt tensioner. You've showed that in the past. Mm -hmm. You can easily loosen the tension on the belts to make those easy to change on the fly if need be. Correct. Now this particular bus, we've got all aired down because we're running some tests on it. So with this belt tensioner all the way off, you're on the side of the road with people in it. It's nothing more than simply just taking the belt, off they come. With your main drive, you half inch ratchet, rock it up, and this comes off. All of your major fixes minus the uh, 12 volt alternator can be changed in a matter of seconds from the highway. So you're up and running. We, we really want zero downtime on our buses. So we have storage here for our sewer hoses. I like to put them in the rear, rear access. You have plenty of 110 outlets, one which is switched at the dash for block heat. So basically you have other accessories you could put back here. You've got your traditional jump start. You have four Group 31 DECA crank batteries right there. And what you're not seeing on a 40 footer is you're not seeing the door. Minus the X3, when a Prevo goes down the road, an XL2, quick glance, 40 foot if you don't see the door. If you see the door, it's a 45 footer, unless it's an X3. The X3, we know why there's no door. They moved their drivetrain back to yeah. compensate for larger gussets in larger bay storage. A water bay number two. This one's gonna house our headhunter water pump. We also have a reverse osmosis system as well as a water softener on board this guy. So that really makes, makes your showers a lot nicer with softer water. In here should be our headhunter. And there she is. And I've got to point out how nice that turned aluminum looks. It's in excellent condition. So we had our own metal shop on the property. So everything from exhaust tips to a lot of the metals that you see here were mill stamped from our facility in Clearwater. And again, the breakaway, easily accessible. And you can see just how well laid out and labeled everything is across the, across the back wall. You have your water pressure regulator accessible, and you can see just how well laid out and labeled everything is across the across the back wall. You have your water pressure regulator, your tanks, everything is labeled and aircraft wired the way uh, Doc, our lead electrician, did. He was Vietnam era um, electrician, so the guy was just articulate with the way he laid these coaches out. So you also have our water manifold. The advantage to that water manifold is, let's say your ice maker line broke. Instead of turning the entire water system off to your coach, you simply come out here, find the ice maker line and isolate it and still have water throughout the machine. So then coming into this bay here. So it follows along with the brush. This bay is a business bay is what we call it. So you're gonna have all of your drawers and such here for storage, but more importantly is the, is the spider panel. Any of these touch panels here throughout the bus, that's our PLC system, is controlled right here. And that's our spider. You'll see a lot of this in multiple coaches, especially the high end like Newell and such, all uses the spider control a latching system, so we chose to put it in this bay. You can also easily access your fuel tank if you had to do anything with your sending unit. All of it's been left fully accessible. Your shade board, another auxiliary air here, power supply. So we did this specifically dedicated to the Aqua Hot. It has its own power supply. And again, you can see that the way they wired it. All of our wiring, all aircraft quality is the way we did this. So just a beautifully 
beautifully laid out coach. And talking about quality, just, I'm just opening, let me open and close this door here, just to show it seems very industrial. It's not flexing or bending at all. And this is a very heavy cabinet here. Those hinges were, were designed and manufactured at Parliament. So we have an entertainment bay on this side, and this is really, really nice. It's got the world's smallest Kenyan stove, but it just fits. Same quality that you see inside the other coaches. Now this is gonna be an electric, so what you're not gonna get is your grease splatter and such up inside the coach. With that being said, we can go ahead and pull this out a little bit farther, oh, and nice. she drops down for more ta table and storage. So this is a refrigerator and a freezer unit, just like its big brother you see in a lot of other models, but this just fit the, fit the, fit the place down here perfectly. Okay, over here as our power comes in, we've got air conditioner overrides, a load manager overrides, so we can bypass a lot of things. If you're out in the middle of nowhere and it's just none of this PLC system is working and you need to have that air on, and you come out here and override it, kind of much like some of the newer manufacturers have on theirs and plenty of up, upper storage up here. So you can do a lot with this bay. We call it love it or leave it. If you didn't like it, we could also go ahead and delete all of this and just put it back to pure storage if if this won't work for you. I, I got to tell you, though, the way that this, you know, cooktop is mounted on the framing here, it's very flush, very high quality finishes. I don't know if I'd want to take it out personally. It's just very well built. It is. We wanted durability, but we wanted something that also that's not going to be stained or something that's got to be replaced. So what we did here is we used Corian and Corian with a matte finish. So if it did stain, it's nothing really nothing to bring this back down to a completely virgin finish. We also use stainless piano hinges to make the operation smoother and it's not going to rust. Everything is still here with the motorhome, just the same as it was when we when it left our lot. So it's been taken care of very, very well. And that manual tray. Yeah, and those will take over a thousand pounds, that particular one. And big one up front here, I see some of those lawn chairs. We got our lawn chairs in here, plenty of storage. How many people out there have taken their motor homes to a dealership and they cannot find their awning controls to repair, retime an awning? We thought about that. Bam! There you go. There's your awning controls. You can set your wind speed for your anometers. All of your controls are right here in one area. They're not scattered. Some manufacturers put two on one side of the coach, two on the other. We didn't do that everything. If it's an awning, it goes right here. So that's easy accessibility for the technician working on your motorhome because first and foremost, once we build a, a motorhome for, for a client, it comes through our department um, and we get to PDI it and say, yes, this is going to work. No, this is not going to work. Redesign it. That was beautiful about having a manufacturing center 100 feet up the road from you or up the parking lot, I should say. Let's take a look at those uh, chairs real quick. Beautiful parliament chairs with that parliament mm -hmm. logo embroidered in there. This is all going to go through the detail process too here. Mm -hmm. Again, this is the condition that this coach came in. So Very, very proud owners. I believe they were the second owners of the coach. They kept it in pristine shape, and I would expect nothing less. Sounds good. Well, I yep. think the folks want to see inside of this coach. Anything else on the exterior yes. that you want to show off? I want to that? show you why our coaches are so safe. So to go along with our battery complement that we have here, this is our, our forward uh, compartment here, which is going to house a lot of the chassis fuses here. Um, we've got our Dune Air machine down there. This is going to provide auxiliary air as well as a lot of regulators. But what I really want to show you is this feature right here. So you pull this guy down. This is how we do it. I'm not going to lay it on the ground. Everything is protected once it leaves the battery. There is no chance of a short out. We want to make sure everything hits these fuses first before it goes anywhere else. So if a component shorted out, it's going to stop right here. Solid steel ceiling on this, solid steel floor. Basically, this is where a spare tire would go if this was a commercial seated tour bus. We outfitted it with our protection here and a few more batteries on the back. Vanary equalizer. What this does is takes your 12 volt charge, your 24 volt charge, and split it right dead even down the middle. And then of course a couple of more fuses for the chassis side here. Okay, you said you wanted to go inside. Let's go take a look inside.
Prevos are very, very, very particular on their slide rooms. And the reason I say that is because of the chassis on these guys are so airtight. First and foremost, what we want to see with our slide room operations is we want to make sure we've got good voltage and we want to make sure our auxiliary air system is at least above 90 PSI. So our slide room controller is going to be located right where Andrew is at and you simply select room whether it's going to be rear or front and then press and hold until the computer tells you to take your finger off the button. Yep, the first thing you hear. Driver. So it's going with the rear slide first and it'll tell you let finger off. Dink. All right, so now we're getting the front slide room out. So you'll notice the first thing besides what Andrew's doing is we want to make sure we have a tall window open or a front door open because this does this coach is so pressurized on the earlier models the XLs it used to actually pop the windows out of them bringing a slide room in without proper ventilation first thing you hear is the slide seal venting and that's done uh, usually lifting the back tag axle creates a venturi effect sucks the slide room seal down and then the electric motors take away and out your slide room goes very very quiet so the cockpit area, this is the typical professional Isery driving seat that came with the bus. So what Diane did was recover it and embroider it with our, with our logo. And she has full contour, uh, air adjust, as well as tilt. Um, and this does ride on the air ride system, so it makes traveling 2,000 miles or how many miles Brad does in a day a lot more comfortable. So our cockpit also has lots of storage for paperwork or personal belongings, garage door openers and such. We have our AV system, a Kenwood navigation system, Panasonic head unit with the screen. Backup camera is a 360 vision, total vision, which is controlled over here. You can actually pan around where you're, where you're parking or driving. We also have a Taconcha brake controller in, in the bus, so if you're towing your trailer, you've got a brake controller. Uh, we also have the level low system, as well as a HWH hydraulic computer aided leveling so you can level two ways automatically or manual we kind of left everything both in here other than that she's pretty well laid out and this is still the original equipment we have up here from the original build all of this is is the way it was when this when this motorhome was built upgrades have not even been done to this they've enjoyed the coach pretty much as the way it is this side here we have our CD player we've got awning controls we have an amplifier for a over the road air antenna, raise lower, amplify on, as well as slide room controls. All of our bays up here compartment are air controlled to keep all the components quiet. Even on the side of the wall here for the passenger, we have map storage. It just opens and breaks away and you can put your maps or your tablets and such in there. We also have those parliament breakaway cabinets that I was telling you about. So now I can easily access the wiring that I need for some of the critical features, such as wiring for the switch panels. Everything can just be pulled away and Velcro's right back in place. Now, as we go through this coach, I'm noticing a couple of things. Uh, this uh, system right here, this is an old antiquated um, I call it a Gen 1, uh, which has been later replaced by either Savant, Crestron. This was the first version. So this controlled all of your televisions, audio, video, and all of that. Basically, it's a master remote, and it is uh, paired uh, for macro and, um, and usage throughout our bus. It'll have bedroom, bay, any of the AV equipment is going to be on this this remote. Easily updatable. Speaking of updates, the roof airs on this have been changed out to newer style Dometic with the 10 button controller, which this bus had the five button originally. We've got three airs. We've got the new 10 button. We've got a countertop that pulls away here. And it also has our drawers, so you can house whatever you wish to put in here. Yeah, and I like that. They made the door a little bit more wide and then a little more storage here on the face, inside the face of the door. And then, you know, when we open and close these, very well-built coach. I will um, tell you a little funny story. One of the conversions we did uh, before this one, we were retrofitting the air conditioners from the five button to the 10 button. Well, that 10 button, five button set more closer up here. So when I routed the whole 
for the new controller. I kind of got into some of this here. Uh oh. Yeah. yeah, and we had a master. The um, his name is Tot. He is in his upper seventies, and he's a master Corian guy. So he was able to blend almost any imperfection, and you just it, it looked like it belonged there. Well, incredible countertops. Mm -hmm. I mean, it almost has a texture like some of the real high-end stones we see mm -hmm. with the two-tone, very well done. And I'm also noticing too, these cabinets are in excellent condition. I love the high gloss. We had a full, a full cabinet shop. What we couldn't design and build ourselves, we would order. So this material was ordered for this bus. Like some of the, some of the other manufacturers, certainly Newell does it and does a, a great job of it. We also line everything up if you notice the wood grain follows through all the way yeah so it's put up on a board and all of this is mapped out and we had a CNC router right the program it would actually cut everything from one gigantic slab even the backsplash on the back if you look carefully see the two lines it follows Wow everything all the way down and here's another example of that uh, we call follow through wood yeah. craftsmanship. You'll see it all the way follows through all the way All the way down beautiful work. We also have under here. We have our inserts for the sink and again with that Parliament breakaway You notice if I had to get to this cozy heater. This is an electric heater on the floor You simply just come into the compartment pull this panel um, You'd have to pull this drawer out this panel breaks away and you're now working on your heater issue if you had one. Fire extinguisher under here, water softener system we visited outside. We have another filtration for just the spigot here, um, which is in the very back. So a lot of thought went into this coach. And again, it was somebody's dream. We were absolutely ecstatic to build for them. This one they chose not to have the dishwasher. It would basically go in this cavity here and you would still have cabinetry to go with it stove top there's our hot plate here all electric and this is on an inverted circuit you can roll it going down the road microwave convection oven you know these inserts here we have either stored up here or downstairs now your rope lighting on the ceiling the vista lighting is dimmable throughout the coach by these slide controls here. You can actually turn them up and down to your liking. So also going to this side, you could see how Diane kind of incorporated this build uh, with, her, with her sofas. And a lot of this work was done right there on our property in Clearwater. So this table here is accessible right here. You have table in, table out, and this is all on an electric worm gear. So you can move your table out. With this, you're gonna have plenty of storage. These are not sleepers. So you have a lot of room for storage space underneath pretty much all throughout your entire seats here uh, and two on the side. So lots of under storage on your on your driver's side, sofa side. This is our display cabinet. We had a gentleman come and he purchased our other uh, H3 Parliament we had here for sale. And I actually brought him a set of these and gifted them to him because the coach was missing them. Parliament's signature line of uh, drinkware. So your rocks glasses, your champagne, or your wine glasses were all signature. Yeah, really cool style mm -hmm. and design on that glassware there. And this is another example of, of our craftsman taught how he was able to actually make this flow at such an angle. And it was a really good design, a really good thought out process. But going along with this is plenty and plenty of storage overhead. Extremely clean too. This has not been detailed mm -hmm. yet. So the motor coach store detail department, they're gonna come through and really tighten this coach yeah. up. The people that own this machine really, really took good, good, good care of it. I can't tell you what that means for me. Yeah, this booth here, I've got we gotta sit down here for size just to show everybody how much room you have here. Very comfortable. You can kind of swivel, sit this way. A lot of seating in this coach, very comfortable. But what else is going on back here? Other than that, like I said, we've got lots of storage. Here's another example of that accessibility with the removable panel here. We also put that same thought into our roof line. Everything drops down so you can get to your filters are right here. It's labeled AC2 and here's your filtration and it just pop out of the way. Notice there's no self collatch. Those hinges are locking. Pocket doors here. We did not utilize any air system. This is unlock 
manual, and there you have. We didn't use the air system, which was an option, yes, but the customer de uh, was bound and determined not to have the uh, air doors. Which is a nice option mm -hmm. now because less stuff that can break, and I like the manual doors, but I've got to point out too, just the style, and when we open that door, that same mirror with the straight mm -hmm. lines in it, and again, this, like the mirror hasn't even been cleaned yet. I mean, this is the way it came in. This is in nice shape. Your ceilings are not sagging, and a quick thing to look at when you're buying a used motor home, you can tell if it's been stored without climate control, if it's been left outside in the sun, simply by looking at the ceiling. If the material is separating, it's sagging, that indicates it's been left with no AC on. Probably out in the hot sun, roof starts to heat up. This particular guy here has two three quarter inch wood decking on the top. And I want to say, I'll put our roof against anybody's. Reason I say that, years ago, they had two helicopters crash at a race in Homestead. They were missing one of the rotor blades to the, uh, the helicopter, one of the helicopters. One of our parliaments came in complaining of a leak in the, in the living room. I got that call, I got the bus, pulled it in, found a rotor blade about that long sticking inside the top of the <laughs> motor home. The uh, authorities came, they had to remove it. My point being, had this been any other motor home, but this particular motor home, that would have went straight through the, into the bus. That's how stout these ceilings are made. Not just Parliament standard, but Prevos in general. A lot of manufacturers do use that high strength um, on the roof. Yeah, and combining <laughs> that with that steel structure from yeah. Prevo, this is an industrial machine. That's a great story. I that was a good those. one. And I think uh, Rick May, who at the time was our general manager, he was uh, not only a dear friend to me, but he was, he was my teacher. Um, they let him keep the blade. Oh, very <laughs> so cool. After, after, sure, they, yeah. after the FAA did their Absolutely. thing, I bet. Absolutely. So, yeah. We got to keep getting you in yep. front of the camera. A lot of good stories, but let's keep uh, rolling through this, Coach. So here what we did, they elected not to have a washer dryer. If that was the case, we would simply raise this countertop up and reform the door, and it would literally sit right in here. It would be a washer-dryer combination. You have your water and your drain. Everything is in this area. Cool style backsplash here. Mm -hmm. A lot of countertop space and that same Corian that we saw in the galley there. So yeah, it just flows through. So underneath, the same thing. Again, you have a, uh, a cozy heater there. And again, you have that access, which is right here. Also, the back plumbing area, all of these break away. You see where they're divided. So if you had to get it to any of your plumbing, you're not getting out eight different tools to get in there. It simply just breaks away. This is a perfect example of they haven't gone through this coach yet. The dream as if you will live forever. I think this is a little aftermarket stickers. Yes. <laughs> Motor Coach Store is going to get rid of any personal effects on that. I don't think it's going to hurt anything. Just a little vinyl sticker. No big deal. A lot of room. Nice galley here. Lots of just high end rich mm -hmm. finishes. You've got your headhunter toilet there with easy oh. accessibility. Somebody put this on here, adding a little bit more decor. So when this hits our detail department, this is all going to basically what we want to do is restore this coach as virgin as we could get this coach and that's what we do we're not going to take away from anything but certainly something like stickers and personal touches like that we will remove all right i've got to i've got to try this shower test for size here plenty of room and then i've got to point out the solid surfaces here and the design work that they used in the shower so this was actually one big chunk and i watched top place cut in place all of this inlay in here and again it was routed you could feel the the routing and the design. And I want to just point out, you know, when we look at these seams here where this glass hits mm -hmm. the side wall all the way around, just really tells a story. And, you know, the more we go through this, Coach, I've got to tip my hat to the team at Parliament. I'm very oh, impressed. Yeah. Our bedroom, this carpet was fun to fun to put in. This yeah. carpet's actually Fabrica. Original carpet's still yeah. in excellent shape, but mm -hmm. the first thing that really caught my eye in this bedroom is the way these Sony speakers are flush mounted in the ceiling here. Mm -hmm. And then and also in the cabinets, again, very mm -hmm. flush. And these have not changed since this was the original for this design. So you've got a lot, a lot of storage back here. The bed is on a pedestal and it has rollers 
that roll along the pedestal so we're not going to have a bed lift with storage under it. What we are going to do is have drawers and again you can see this is the way she came in. Lots and lots and lots of storage. There should also be a couple of on the side. These are deep drawers uh, for whatnots, remotes, uh, medicine, back closet full for suits, again with the breakaway, if you had to get to the bearings. That right there is a linear bearing cover. You can take this away, take the wheel out, and you'd be able to access, uh, access the room easier if you had to change a seal. So you're going to see that kind of build consistent throughout the motorhome. Back closet area where Andrew is standing is the business end of the motorhome. So right there is where all of our business end is, which I'd like to kind of touch on going along with that aircraft design that we like to use. Everything is laid out in one place. Remote controls for each of your 4,000 watt inverters are here. Accessibility, it's not a problem. That's what it looks like right there. You can see the wiring and the way we ran everything. Well, what we did as a service center, a lot of the manufacturers do, is we had two copies. First copy goes with the customer, second copy stays with the team. When it came in for service and we made any altercations to what you just saw, we made the correction not only on our copy, but on the customer's copy as well. So if number R124 changed to a different location or a different number, it was so noted. So all of the technical drawings are all up to date as far as it was when it left our shop and continued service there afterwards. A lot of value in that. Inverters, the controls on a Zantrek is right here. So you don't have to get a book. Everything is right here to operate those remotes and your inverters. So let's say your bus had to go in for valve work. You hear that? Oh, wow. I don't know if I've ever seen that in a Prevo. Yep, and this has to be most of this, of course, this is the age of it. This has never had to have that work done. Everything accessible, not only for us, but the folks at uh, Detroit Diesel or our service center that actually works on the motor. So getting to the top of the engine is not a problem with this guy. Nice, I've never seen that in a Prevo before. Lots and lots and lots of storage here. With this being said, again, accessibility, your rear camera, you simply pull the pack and there it is. Same with here, this is our relay panel. You simply just pull it down and there's our light lighting management right there behind that metal box. You don't have to even use a screwdriver, any kind of tool to get in there. It's simply just accessible. Owner's manuals. There she is, bus 167. So you're going to have all of your manuals, your drawings, your electronic pinouts. Everything is here. All of your manuals, as will a lot of motorhomes, everything is in here. Changes, addendums to whatever was uh, changed in the motorhome will also be in here. If you feel the need for any more support or another drawing, you can contact us here at the Motor Coach store and I have that personal information uh, on handy for all of these buses that we built. More than enough storage and room back here. Close yeah. hampers. Yeah, nice. You got four of them yep. too. So that does give you the option for a televator, okay. you know, so we can do that. This is actually the original TV that we put in here, an old analog TV. Certainly you can upgrade. Well, Jojo, it's always an honor to hang out with you and learn about these motorhomes and this coach is definitely a buy and we forgot to mention it's only got how many miles are on this it's coach? got 74 9 on this coach 75,000 miles <laughs> barely broken in available for three hundred and ninety nine thousand nine hundred and ninety nine dollars here at the motor coach store mm -hmm. now if someone's a serious and qualified buyer who should they get a hold of well they could first and foremost get a hold of Brad Twait um, and he'll put you with Brandon our sales representative come down and meet with me and I'll personally show it to you i be happy to actually it's not not often we see a parliament 40 footer out there but 40 footer in general yeah great opportunity for someone joe thanks again for Absolutely. your time so appreciate you also greatly appreciate all of you out there subscribing to the channel we hope you're all having a great day thanks again thanks again bye